Hello, everybody. I'm Alexis Brink. I'm the president of Jinshin Institute, and I'm a member of the Transactional Analysis IESA Committee for Social Action. And today I'm here with Rocky Locklear. He's a Native American of the Lombie tribe. He's a licensed mental health counselor practicing in North Carolina. And hello, Rocky, how are you? Hi, Alexis, great, it's good to be here. Good to see you. And Rocky and I were last year together at the, TA, uh, the Project TA 101 in Raleigh for the 50th anniversary of transactional analysis. And it was, I had so much fun with Rocky and I got to know him and he's just honestly one of my favorite people. I, oh, and he's very knowledgeable. I learned so much from you. So I'm glad we can have this conversation and we'll talk about ego state. So passing it over to you. Okay, so you have three ego states. You have the parent, you have the adult, and then you have the child. And the parent can be broken into a nurturing parent and then a critical parent. The adult is just like it is. It's, it's the adult ego state as you are in your present place of being with planning, observing, analyzing the part of self that you can think and be logical and have a positive framework of how you navigate yourself to others and things. And then you have this child ego state. Do you have this free child? And then you have this other side that has an adapted child and a rebellious child. So in the relationship to a critical parent, I became an adapted child. It was very submissive, anything that you say that I will do. So a child ego script that I had that came from one of my uh, teachers was B. I was five years old. And when it comes to the playground, I would not play because I could not mess my clothes up. Me not messing my clothes up was not me being a free child because I wanted to play and be and have my being. I was an adaptive child. Me not messing up my clothes was a way of protecting my mother and protecting myself. Because I had a critical mother or a critical parent that would punish me if I messed my clothes up because it was a reflection of her and her quality of care for me and how good of a mother she was. So was this, was, was this actually something in your mind or was this actually something that your parents said or is that like the parent in your mind? Do you it was that? the parent in my mind because I come to this world as a free child, right? I'm curious, I'm spontaneous. And then as soon as we start getting these slaps on our hand, we start like, uh-oh, what am I going to do with this? And so for me, it was a adaptive. Like I would like make sure that I would touch things to get slapped. On the opposite end, you know, I have a brother who was more like a rebellious, like, okay, you're going to slap my hand, I'm going to hit it harder. So are the analogies of an adapted child and a rebellious child. So our energy is this free child, but then this parent ego state comes in as it navigates it. A nurturing parent would not be able to slap it, but maybe hold the hand and say, Rocky, you're not supposed to touch that. Mm -hmm. So... Yes. What age are we talking about? For, for me, um, that early script of don't, don't play and get dirty uh, was a script of don't be a child, and that's at the age of five years old. Okay. And, and what it really probably boiled down to is my mom wanted to make sure that I was self-managed because I was a responsibility. I mean, she was not a single mother, but my father worked an awful lot. Uh, in construction, so she really had to manage the house, manage me, and also manage a job. Mm -hmm. So the less maintenance she had for me was easier for her. Right. And so do you still feel, can you still feel this adaptive child when you are an adult, like today? Does it still play a role? How does it work? Oh my, yeah. So for me, it's not even as much as a, an adaptive child in a parent ego structure, right? I mean, I'm sitting here, and just a couple weeks ago, I had a script that I needed to rewrite. I'm here working with an intern. She's Caucasian. She's light-skinned with beautiful blue eyes, and she gives me a stroke, and she's the intern about me being such a good counselor. And Alexis, I could not receive the stroke. 
Mm -hmm. So as me processing Rocky, why are you having such a hard time receiving this stroke? For me, coming from a sharecropper history with my grandmother, uh, we always had to be sort of like a good hand servant to a certain extent. So as a person who served, because we are minorities in the South, uh, we was just a couple of generations ago, we was, you know, hard hands as sharecroppers to a white master. And I was stuck in this ego state that how can a servant be good and, and can I receive that stroke? And I had to come back to that person and talk, cross talk and say, wow, I had a hard time receiving a stroke because it was such a high honor. And we just really decontaminated that. And it was profound, Alexis. I mean, literally, that was just a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so how do, you, um, how do you work with that? Do you bring in more of the adult or the parent? How do you? Well, I think the adult is really the part of self, like analyzing why am I not able to receive this stroke? Okay. Having a difficult time receiving the messages or the transactions that are coming towards me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And 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 the, and what she wanted was an adult, the adult, right? Or I mean, even in this place of her coming from a child and I being in a superiority, like, oh my God, you're you're awesome at that. But it was not the case. I put myself in a position of her being an adult and me being a child, and was like, oh, okay, thank you, you know yeah. that active child yeah and stroking of course is so important anyway most definitely yeah. uh rocky uh can you show can you share with us uh, the model can you show it pull it up for us and talk a little bit about it the way yeah. they the way they um we draw it out over time even in therapy and groups and we demonstrate how they work and how different ego states uh, work and also in relationships. And what I was talking about, Alexis, is the parent ego state has a, either wise a critical parent or a nurturing parent. The adult ego state is where we try to stay in as much as possible. And that is really in this place of having different outcomes. And this is where we are able to rewrite the scripts and have a different outcome. And the child is either wise a rebellious child or an adaptive child but genuinely a free child is what we come into this universe as. Um, and really thinking about that, if you've ever seen the movie um, Inside Out, uh, the main character, Riley, it comes into the universe with joy. And based on encounters with the world around her and her parents, all these other emotions come into her existence. Mm -hmm. I tell my clients in, 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 in the framework that emotions are energy in motion and they are usually connected to an experience. And based on how big that experience is or uh, in, in, trans, in, in the theory with kids, uh, the core memory of that emotion, if you've ever seen uh, Inside Out, that, that core memory needs to be looked at, you know? And, and how can we take that, that, that really tough memory and, and rewrite how, you know, you can have a different outcome. As that child, you was in this child position, but as an adult, you can navigate it totally different because you have the power to have different outcomes. So the three ego states, they, do they all work together? And then you, do you bring in different ego states at different times as you need them? Yeah, so for me, when I was talking about not being able to receive that stroke right, it was almost like my parent ego had not only my mother's script in her, she also had my grandmother's script in her and also had my grandmother's grandmother's script in her. Mm -hmm. So those things come down from generation to generation as a way to protect us. But yet still in today's society, I am a minority male. And yes, there is systems of racism that exist. And yes, I still have to be mindful and maybe adapt to those settings but I don't have to find myself being in a submissive position of yes, master, anything for you, master, because now I can work beside Caucasian Americans and be an equal and be an adult and adult framework. Right. So um, can you can you explain a little bit about the function of the adult? Uh, the function of the adult is really like me tapping into uh, the framework of why 
am I having a difficult time? Um, and that's the contract, actually. Why am I having a difficult time receiving pages stroke? That's, that, that's the, the problem that needs to be solved. And it comes from the mind? Thank you. Well, I mean, it, it's definitely, it's definitely a, a, a transaction. I mean, her message of good work comes to me and I'm blocking it. I'm blocking it with everything because I'm having a difficult time receiving it. But I'm having to figure out where, where is that coming from? And I think it, it's connected to this idea that you don't never get recognized for your hard work. But in that, in that relationship, I was recognized to so receive that stroke. Mm -hmm. And once again, that gets back to being an ad adaptive child that I didn't receive strokes probably the way I needed to, or if it was, it was not for being my spontaneous self. So in that session, I was my spontaneous self. I was my free child and I got recognized for that. And also that was difficult for me to receive. Mm -hmm. So would you say that all three of the ego states, uh, ego states have an important function? Yes, I mean the reality is that we need um, we need a uh, not necessarily what you call a critical parent, but we need a reference, a framework to set boundaries, you know, and 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 let us know that there are boundaries that exist. And and when you really get into the personality adaptations, which is a lot more work, and I'm still having a process that the ego structures are designed differently, and that's why you have different outcomes, like you. Know, you have this charming manipulator they might cut off this critical parent and want to be just this this rebellious child who don't have boundaries and that's why they take on this antisocial personality disorder mm -hmm. and so what is the, the can you say that it is decision making um offering protection is that the function of the parents would you say but when you really think about it when you think about the structure of a uh charming manipulator what probably happened is they had authority figures or a parent figure within their life that did not serve their child ego state. And so they had to rebel against that system in order to get their needs met. And what happens in their adult life, they just don't trust authority to take care of them. So they constantly rebel to be in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I guess through TA and working, it, uh, working on it and taking a good look at it, we can recognize it, understand it, and then have another ego state support it. Is that how it works? It's like you bring in another, well, or you, you bring in your own nurturing parents, for example, you built that. Yeah, I, I'll never forget when I was in my own personal work with Van and Emily at, at the Southeastern Institute in Chapel Hill, that me processing my work was, Rocky, you're a critical parent, is consuming your child. They need to become a vegetarian kind of dialogue. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, I just cried. You know, my free child, my inner child has never really had a place. And now it just can be so fluid with my clothing attire, my personal work and playing with kids. It's like, it's like, like my kids in a way almost give me permission to play. And it's just like this, this relationship of authenticity. So, allowing my critical parent to have its place in my life allows my free child to have its place in my life. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And just being with you, I really do see a lot of free child coming through. And I mean, look at this beautiful smile, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I really enjoy also being with you and talking with you. So, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure really sharing my passion with you, Alexis. Yeah. Uh, Rocky, we'll do this again. We'll have another conversation. This is All so right. cool. And uh, I'll see you soon. We'll, we'll talk about another topic next time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky.